7.17 is your time. Very good morning to you and thank you so much for being with us on Breakfast with Reg. Welcome to The Point. Uh, you heard me t- uh, speak to him briefly just before we went to the, the, um, to the news. Pastor Steve Anderson is in Botswana. Arrived last Thursday. He's already heard. He had his uh, first church service right here in Botswana. And uh, he's already seen what, well, at least what some of the problems that we have are. One of that, alcoholism. He says that we drink too much alcohol in this country. And uh, he's, he says that, you know what, I'm going to continue preaching up against homosexuals. You remember that um, he's the, the that, that pastor who... Uh, <laughs> Was is the controversial pastor who um, South Africa said, you know what, we are not going to be to allow you to come into the country because what we think you are preaching is nothing but hate speech. And he said, you know, it's okay. I feel it's, it's a disappointment that I'm, I'm not able to go to South Africa, but you know what, I'm going to go to Botswana and I'm going to spread the, the word of God. Well, he's agreed to speak to us this morning. He's in the studio and um, he's not alone. He's, by the way, the founder and pastor at the Faithful Word Baptist Church in the United States. They've set a branch up here uh, in Klokwing. And uh, I'm also with Reverend Tabo Mampani, second vice president of the Botswana Council of Churches and pastor at the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Botswana. Ken Youngman of the Lesbians, Gays and Bisexuals of Botswana, the Habibu, the advocacy officer, is going to be joining us a little bit later. Gentlemen, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being with us uh, this morning. Let me start off with you, um, Pastor Anderson. Controversial you are. That you cannot deny that. First, how has been your, 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 your reception? How has been the reception in Botswana? Oh, the reception's been great. In fact, the reception here is better than the reception in the United States. Yeah, and why do you think that is? Well, I think the people here are, are more friendly and willing to talk. Whereas in the United States, sometimes people are just too busy, life is more fast-paced, and people are less religious in the United States, so a lot of them just don't have an interest in spiritual things. Right. So here, we can walk up and down the street, and people love to talk, and when I preach the gospel to them, they're happy to to listen, and they like it, and we get along great. I love this country. Right. Why then do you come here and minister here when... More, you say, more people in the United States are less likely inclined to, to, you know, talk about the Word of God. Well, we want to do both. You know, we want to be here and there. The reason that we chose Botswana is because, you know, one of our main church members, who's a great preacher at our church, he is marrying a girl from Molepolole that he met in the United States mm-hmm. while she was studying abroad. Right. And so we decided that this was a great opportunity to send him here to, to preach the word of God for the rest of his life to the Botswana people. And so, you know, we want to preach the gospel to, to all nations, United States and Botswana. You don't preach the gospel. You spew hate speech. That's what some people have been saying. Well, they said the same thing about Jesus. They called Jesus the devil. They called him Beelzebub. And, you know, they killed him for a reason because they did not like him. And, and Jesus said, if they hated me, you know that they will hate you also. Mm. And um, just to quote some of the the, um, the 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 utterances that you've made, uh, you you've actually, uh, 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 been, you have uh, been quoted as having uh, you know been against the Orlando massacre where around about fifty people were killed, and um, well, you have said that uh, you would not you, you uh, just tell us that what it is that you said. Well, I, made so it very, I, I don't misquote you. Sure. I made it very clear that I do not condone of violence. I'm a totally nonviolent person, and I did not approve of a guy going in there and just shooting up the place. Right. But I said I will not be sad about it or mourn about it mm-hmm. because the people that were victims were disgusting homosexuals who the Bible says are worthy of death. Mm-hmm. The Bible says that the government should put them to death. So why would I be sad? If these horrible people died, that the Bible said should die anyway. So, so, so you believe that the government should be killing homosexuals? Yes, okay. I do. Absolutely. One of the other quotes: If the Bible condones slavery, then I condone slavery because the Bible's always right about every subject. Yes, and I do not believe that the Bible condones slavery, but it was asked the question: If it did, <clears throat> yes, I would condone it because the Bible is always right, and I am not smarter than God. So if I have a different opinion than what the Bible says, I'm going to go with what the Bible says. Right. Even if slavery from a humanity perspective is wrong? Well, the Bible says that we should trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lean upon our own understanding. So 
God is smarter than me, so I get all my opinions from the Bible. I don't just make things up on my own. I get it from the Bible. Mm. So whatever the Bible says is always right about every subject. Do you believe that too many Botswana are alcoholics? What else do you think is a problem here? Well, you know, I've only been here for a few days, and most of the things in Botswana I like better than the United States. Most things. I love it here. Uh, that's the big thing that has sort of stood out to me. It seems like drunkenness and, and alcoholism is a big problem here. I've noticed it. Okay. A lot of drinking everywhere I look. What can be done about it? Well, I think the preaching of God's word is the only answer. I don't think it's the government's job to fix it. I think we need the preachers in Botswana to start preaching harder sermons against alcohol and preach hard from the Bible, preach all the scriptures that are against alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. Right. Let's see what the, what the preachers here are doing. Um, Reverend. Yeah. Reverend Mampani. You, we, 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 we had a discussion last week yeah. about um, the, the visit, uh, Pastor Anderson, you were steadfastly against it. You still are against it, but he's here. What, what, what do you say in response to what he's just been saying? Uh, I, I, I wonder if this man is a Christian. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, <laughs> the way he says the things, I doubt his Christianity because Christians, Christianity is all about love. Mm -hmm. Love God with all your soul, with your mind, with your, all your strength, and love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So if somebody say he hates people, I doubt if we are on the right path. We are in the same track, me and him. Well, he doesn't. He didn't say he hates people. He says he. No, he, I did say that I hate he, people. Oh, you hate, I do hate homosexuals. He's, oh, he's, hate so, homosexuals. This, I only hate homosexuals, though. I do not hate other people. Yeah, but only homosexuals. homosexuals are people. You know, they are part of the society. Why do we hate them? That's why the reason why Jesus Christ died for us is for us to repent, each and everyone. And what, what makes us to think that God is only for those who are not homosexuals? God is God for all of us. Either you are a gay or you are not a gay. He, we all belong to God. That's why he gave the son to those who don't even believe in him. Either you are a Muslim or an Islamic, whatever religion you are, he is still our God. Mm -hmm. And I've, I, 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 no, I, I can't take it when I hear a God-fearing person, somebody who claims to be a preacher of the word, to say that he is homosexuals. What makes him to be special than other people? What makes him to think that he is better than other people, even at all himself? He's, we are all sinners. That's why I just came here. And we have to preach the gospel of, we have to preach the gospel of love, me and him. Well, you know what? God showed what he thought about homosexuals when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And in the New Testament, he refers back to that. And he says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh or queer flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So if you want an example of what God thinks about homosexual, it's fire and brimstone being rained on Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know what Bible this guy's reading. But open the Bible to Genesis 19, and it's crystal clear. It's right there. I guess you have to know the Bible and the context of the Bible. Why was the Bible written in that way? And the context of the people they were writing about at that time. We have to contextualize the Bible. Make the Bible talk to us like now, not to talk to the people like it used to talk to them some years ago. Like right now, when the Bible says, if you sin, if your eye make you sin, you should sort of poke your eye. I've seen a lot of us, we are sinning because we are seeing beautiful girls, beautiful people. But we are all, all of us, we have all our eyes. Why do we take part of the Bible and make it a, a, a and just take on part of the Bible. They will say if you are an adulterer, you must stone to death. The woman who was supposed to be stoned to death that by the time of Jesus. But they, we are people seeing people in church doing all this thing. People everywhere are doing that. But we never say because people are, are doing that. Even prostitution. We are not killing them. They are part of the society. We talk to them. I do believe that adulterers should be stoned to death. Right. I believe the death penalty should be on adultery. And when our country was founded in America, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and in the first few hundred years of America, adultery and homosexuality were both punished by the death penalty in America in the 1700s, 1800s. It's what the changed? Bible. It's the Word of God. So what's changed? Well, did, they, I, did they start reading a different Bible? Well, part of it is that they no, start no, no, reading no, a different no, Bible. No, 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 no. This is so a different that, Bible than no, he has. No, that, that not really the different Bible. You know, they contextualize the Bible. They make the Bible to talk to them at this present situation. That's why we say the Bible should come every time. You cannot talk to the, make the Bible to preach the same gospel that we are preaching 2,000 years ago by the time of Jesus Christ. We make the Bible to talk to us in a, any situation. That, that's why we say we are contextualizing in our context, in our situation, in our area. How do we understand God that way? That's why you see when we baptize, we baptize in a different way because... 
people say we have to take somebody to a dam or to a river. But in people in, in, in a country where there is no rivers, what do you do? We use a small cup as long as the importance of it will be water and the word of God. Right. That's that why is, we do that. That is wrong. We it's need wrong to still to dunk people underwater. They need to be baptized underwater. And Jesus Christ is the same Hell, yesterday. Jesus, listen, Hold on. No, let me, let me please, talk. No, it's not wrong. Let me explain to you. We, we, as the most important thing is the word of God. Is water in the word of God. If there's no, if there's a de- in a desert, how do you going to baptize people in a desert where there's no water? You think that the word of God changes. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And you think you're smarter than the Bible with your little cup of water. You need to dunk somebody in a bathtub if you can't find a river. You find a swimming pool. And if there's no water, and if there's no water what do you got to do? If there's no water, then human beings would be dead because human beings can't live without water. Everywhere human beings live, I mean, water exists. Water, enough water to dip can, inside. Can, can, I, can I jump in there? <laughs> I'm still here, guys. Can, uh, Pastor Anderson, uh, 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 Reverend Mampani has brought in a, an interesting an is- interesting point with regards to the cup of water and the river mm-hmm. and whatnot. And I think it goes back to his, um, his point of con- contextualizing everything that we read in the Bible uh, to, you know, contemporary world now. This issue about the, the you're, you're saying a tub, and yet he's saying that in the past they were using rivers. Mm-hmm. So... W- wouldn't you be then deviating from what the no. Bible? No. Okay. The Bible does not say you have to use a river. Okay. But it says that we are buried with him by baptism. Okay. Buried under the water. It pictures the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus was baptized, he went down into the water. He came up out of the water. Uh, this guy were, thinks simply because there were that enough, he's better there were than enough Jesus rivers Christ. In his time. There were enough rivers at that time. Mm-hmm. What about even in a desert like Botswana? What are you going to do? If deep in Kalahari, where there's not even a stream, what are you going to use? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 do not agree with his position. Uh, not at all. I even doubt his position as a pastor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he thinks he can just ignore the Bible and do whatever he wants right. and baptize no, people with a little Bible. sprinkle. I'm, what if you are wrong, Pastor Anderson? Have you ever thought about I it? I know for a fact have, that have I'm you, not. Have wrong. you ever thought about it that Absolutely. wait a minute, I'm only human. What if my yes. position and in, is, and is in not fact, the right position. In fact, I've thought about it often, but one thing I know is never wrong is the Bible, the Word of God. I may be wrong. The Bible is never wrong. And you'll never find this little cup of water sprinkling nonsense in the Bible. They go under the water. They come out of the water. It pictures the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you can't find water, you better go look for some water and dunk them. So, so um, what all these other churches are doing, the Catholics are doing it. The Lutheran yeah, the Lutheran are doing it. So you're, uh, all these billions of people in the mm-hmm. world who are doing that yeah. actually doing the wrong thing. Oh, they're ignoring lots of the Bible. They ignored the part about homosexuality. Right. They ignore the part about baptism. So they're going to hell, basically. But, but may, may, may I ask you, because, I don't know, the Bible says the women, they, have, they don't have to say anything in a church. They have to come and sing and go back home. But we see people, women, a lot of churches here, the ministers are the women, and we still respect them. Yeah, as we, I don't respect that. No minister should be a woman. The Bible says that women should keep silent in the church and that men are to preach in church. And any female pastor is in disobedience to God's word. Men are the preachers, right. according to the Bible. Let me bring in quickly, because I've got to go to the news headlines. Let me bring in um, Kane Youngman here. Kane, you are a, you're, you're a homosexual. And uh, listening to Pastor Anderson saying uh, the government actually should kill you. What do you say? Well, I have all sorts of issues with that. And I'm, I'm glad that we live in Botswana, where the Constitution actually protects people from the freedom of conscience, for me to be able to be who I am, for me to be able to practice whatever religion I choose. I have issues with Pastor Anderson is sitting here, shaved, and the mm-hmm. very Bible he's talking about is against him shaving. He's shaven. Yeah. He's well kept. You're saying no, Pastor. The Bible never says that open, shaving is wrong. It does not say that in the Bible. Because, because, open because, open the Bible. Not that. Don't open that piece of junk. This Bible that the pastor to my left has is not a real Bible. Okay. It's a new translation that takes out entire verses. Hell, God. I have say, the King James Bible, the original English Bible. Read it out loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Read it out loud. Let, no, wait, 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 wait. Let's not mislead the people here. If we are talking of the Bible now, you have to talk to the, uh, some of us uh, Bible scholars. I will tell you how did we create the Bible and what makes us to understand the Bible. You know that the first Bible was not in, in, in English. 
Uh, absolutely. I have a Greek New Testament. I read the Greek New Testament. I'm familiar with that, of course. Yeah, you have but to... that Bible that you have there is a, is a corrupted piece of, junk. piece of junk because they have taken out entire verses. You need a King James Bible. That, verse is, that Bible King... takes out verses that are controversial. It takes out the word hell. It takes out bastard, piss, damn. It takes out everything and softens it up. Mm. And that's why we have a bunch of soft preaching behind the pulpit because they have this watered-down fake Bible instead of the real Bible, the King King James Bible. Reggie, the reason what I wanted to say was that my concern is that the way the approach that the pastor is using is that right now almost every year we have close to four hundred dropouts, school girls. They drop out because of teenage pregnancy. Mm. And the Bible says they must be stoned to death. With Pastor Anderson here, we're going to have no, nobody, nobody remaining in the world. <laughs> there will be nobody remaining in the world. Yeah. And from our setup in the family structure in Botswana, mo- most of us come from household where we practice. Um, where we practice, it's. Give me a guess, sir. No, I'm trying to remember. I, I don't need it in Botswana. Okay, okay. So cohabitation. Uh, cohabitation. All right. Oh, not only here, even back in America. Yeah. yeah. No, but he's saying it's I, I wrong. I speak yeah. America because I've never. I, I've yeah, I'm never telling you all over America. the world. Yes, but th- but that's yeah. what he's yeah. saying. It's wrong. Yeah, what we, we are doing there. is wrong. Yeah. So, exactly how many people are we going to kill in Botswana? When is it enough? Yeah. Um, Pastor Anderson, where do you where do you think homosexuals come from? Do you think they they do it themselves? They want to. They want to be like that. I, I think that they're evil haters of God, and the Bible says that he gives them over to a reprobate mind in Romans 1, and he gives them the heart of a beast to do what an animal would do. First of all, I'm not going to listen to somebody interpret the Bible or tell me what right and wrong is. This guy doesn't even know the proper place to put his, his reproductive organ. All so, right? he, this so guy, this guy he, absolutely yeah. he should be no. killed. That's okay. what the Bible <laughs> says. <laughs> Guys, I know, I, I'm, I'm, I know sure he loves, I'm sure he loves little boys, too, he's, because uh, homosexuals ew. are pedophiles. Okay. Um, can, I, can I say? This. Jesus. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I say this? Can, can, please just hold a thought because I'm very late for the news headlines. I'm going to go to the news headlines. When we come back, we'll continue with this discussion. Like us on Facebook at Breakfast with Rich. The views and opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the management or the station. The Gabs FM hotline. Dial 395-6962 and have your say or SMS on 14962 and be part of the conversation. 7.42 is your time. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being with us on Breakfast with Reg. Welcome to the second part of The Point. And uh, you, for those of you who have been listening um, uh, just before the news headlines, you know what, what it is that we are talking about. I can see there's so many of you want to, to jump in and, and, and start talking about this, but I'm going to have to ask you to hold off for, for a little while. Controversial anti-pastic, uh, anti-gay pastor Steve Anderson uh, arrived in Botswana last Thursday, held his first church service in Botswana on Sunday. He says he has already diagnosed that Botswana are alcoholics and has attacked local pastors who are being toothless because they are not preaching against the huge immorality in this country. He also says that the government, he believes that the government must kill homosexuals and pedophiles, pregnant school girls, and that if slavery... You, you, you'll correct yourself, sir. If slavery were allowed in the Bible, he would support it, and that women must never be allowed to preach in churches. He has rubbish the Good News Bible as a piece of junk, and that the King James Bible is the only Bible that should be read. Now, Anderson is here with us in the studio, and he's going head-to-head with uh, Reverend Tabo Mampani and Kane Youngman. Kane Youngman is from Nechabibo. Reverend Mampani is the second vice president of the Botswana Council of Churches and pastor at the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Botswana. Pastor Anderson is the founder and pastor at Faithful Word Baptist Church in the United States. Well, the BCC, the Botswana Council of uh, Churches, released a statement denouncing um, the utterances by uh, Pastor Anderson. And uh, they were saying that uh, th- this is not what the Bible preaches. The Bible preaches love and and, and all those uh, things. Um, but let's continue with the discussion. I'm going to be taking your calls on 395-696-214962 is the SMS line, and Breakfast with Reg is our Facebook page. Pastor Anderson, you were saying that, no, you didn't say that. Um, yes, I, I never said that pregnant schoolgirls should be killed. That is not true. That's what this homosexual to my right accused the Bible of saying. Mm. But obviously a homosexual is not qualified to teach us what the Bible says. Okay, he so, doesn't even know the difference between man and woman. Okay, what 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 was the, the statement? 
statement that you you made, the point that you made with regards to the Bible and um, uh, 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 getting pregnant out of wedlock. Exactly. The Bible is saying pregnancy out of wedlock. It, it says so in um, mm. Leviticus 20, 10, 12. I was saying the reverend, the, the pastor right. should explain. And what does that. it say? What does it say about getting pregnant out of wedlock? If you get pregnant or if you lie about your virginity before you get married, you should be taken to the city center and be stoned to death. So if you can explain the, to How is that different from no, what I was saying? He's <coughs> making things up, okay. and he said, oh, it's, it's Leviticus 20, verse 10. Leviticus 20, verse 10 says I no such say, thing. But, yes, you did. Well, everybody but heard you say Fine. We, we can yeah, argue about it's, it's which, which verse scroll. it is. It's not the Bible scroll. But what does the Bible we, say? We, is that what the Bible says? No, that's, that, that is, that's not what it says. Okay, what does it say? The Bible says that if a girl... You know, gets pregnant out of wedlock. If a man and a woman have intercourse, okay, and they're not married, that the man has to marry the girl if she and her father are willing to give her to him in marriage. Right. And if they're not willing to give her to him in marriage, mm-hmm. he has to pay the family money for taking away her virginity. Oh, so, Fifty so, shekels of silver. All right, that's so, what it says. So it's not it's not an it's it's not a big issue then. We to to no say. no. Pe- pe- God does not punish people with death for having sex outside of marriage. All right. He punishes adultery with death. That's when married people... Also, people they, can have uh, sex out, no, outside of No, they of cannot. It is a sin, but it is not the government's job to punish. Because there's a difference between crime and right. sin. Right. Okay. So it's a sin, but it should not be a crime. Adultery should be a crime. Murder is a crime. But... If we were, if every sin were a crime, we would all go to jail every day because yes. we all sin. You know, right. nobody's perfect. Right. But so you, these huge things like murder, adultery, rape, those are crimes. Right. Okay, those should be punished by the government. It's not the government's job to punish drunkenness or fornication. They're what, sins. What is – okay. But, but they're, they're sins, but it's, it's not the government job to fix the alcohol problem. Right. It's the preachers need to get some – you know, get, get more manly and preach harder against sin instead of being a bunch of sissies. Okay, help us, help us understand this. Um, crime and sin. Help, mm-hmm. help us understand sure. the difference. Yes, well, sin is any time we disobey – Anything that the Bible tells us. Anytime right. we disobey the commandments. So lying is a sin. Disobeying our parents is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Drinking alcohol is a sin. So, so, uh, but those should not be against the law. Right. So, the Bible so lying should not be punished by the government. Exactly. Right. That's right. So even if you were to lie to the courts, you should not be punished. Well, if, if you, you lie under lie... oath in a courtroom, that is punished. What, because... is, the, what is the difference what is now? About this? Well, because the Bible says that thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So if you go into right. court so it's a and you it's bear a false witness, that is a crime. Fine. In court, it's, no it's a crime. Sin? How, so... do, how do you justify that it's a crime if it goes to court and it should be punished as opposed to just lying in general. This is why. Because in the law of God, which is found in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, Mm. the Bible says that if you go to court and you testify against someone falsely, you are to be punished by the government. (laughs) Whatever the punishment was for the person you are accusing, you receive that punishment. Okay, That's a crime. Whereas drinking, I believe drinking is a sin, but I do not believe that it should be against the law because the Bible does not ever give the authority to the government Mm -hmm. to punish drinking. Or, or to punish fornication, you know, right. people who have sex outside of marriage. So there's a difference between crime and sin. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, I, I wanted you to, to, to finish off what you were saying. And Pastor Anderson is not missing his words. He, he's saying that um, he, the way he's making references to you, uh, he says that you should be, you should be, you should be killed. Mm-hmm. You, this homo, he calls you this homosexual to my right. What do you think of all of this that he's saying? Oh, uh, for me, it's simple. The, the pastor needs help. Yeah. He's a very sick man. The yeah. way he says things, yeah. he really needs help. How, what do you mean he's sick in terms of what? Because it, it, it would seem like he dictates terms of what to use in the Bible and what not. What to use. Listen to him justifying certain things, things that are, that are there in black and white. He's justifying things to suit himself. You see, this is what I find disturbing. This is why... There is a constitution to say, okay, we as human beings, we ha- always have different opinions. But for us to at least live peacefully and civilly amongst each other, this is why we have a constitution. It's because of people like pastor here. 
Are you, are you, are you, uh, pastor, are you, are you, uh, sorry? And I think it will be, pro- it's, it's, it's improper to call this guy a pastor. He just said the gentleman next to me, because I doubt him being a pastor. A pastor mm. cannot utter kind, those kind of words. Give us our begra- your background, he, he Pastor. He can disrespect yeah. me the way Maybe. he is, but he identifies as a pastor, so I'll give him that respect and call him a pastor. I don't care whether he calls me this homosexual on my right, he can disrespect me all the way. I don't it's it's I kind of funny that this man think. It's kind of funny when somebody who likes to eat dung, who likes to eat feces, calls you he's, he's, that you need help. You right. I need help. This guy has sex with other men. Right. I mean, any normal person, even if they're not even a Christian, knows that that's disgusting and filthy. Okay. okay. Now, now let me give you my background. Okay? okay. My background is that I was born and raised in a Christian home in the United States. I've gone to a Baptist church my entire life. My dad was an electrician. His dad was an electrician. And before that, electricity had not been invented yet. Okay. And so I grew up in church. I love the Bible. I love the Word of God. And I preach the Bible. I don't care what some council of churches says somewhere. I'm going to go with what the Bible says. Yes. There are false prophets in the Bible. Hundreds of false prophets. And when Elijah stood up, and Elijah was the only one preaching the truth, there were 850 phony preachers who were lying to the people. You, you have no, nine no, kids. No, no. Just, this just, guy just is a like sec. a prophet just, to just, bail. Just a sec, just a sec uh, Rev, please. Um, Pastor Anderson, you've got nine kids. Yes, I'm you, married you, with nine children. Right. You 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 oh, are 35 years old. 35 right? years old. And you started, when you started your own church at 24. When I was 24 years old. you believe that you're destined to be? Yes, I do. Absolutely. I believe that God has chosen me to be a prophet to the nations, to preach the word of God, and to sound it out with no fear, with boldness. Not like these preachers who are only interested in people's money, so they tell them what they want to hear for money. I don't, I don't want your money. I want to preach the truth, and you can like it or lump it. Do you, do you believe that you, you spew hate speech? Do you believe that um, you, the, the, your approach is it may be uncomfortable for some people? Do you believe that it could be wrong? My approach is not wrong because if you read Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and then you read about Jesus and the Apostle Paul, they preached hard. Jesus, the Bible tells us Jesus yelled when he preached. He called pastors like this guy to my left who wear long robes. He said the Sadducees and the Pharisees were serpents and vipers, and he said they were of the devil. And he said, beware of the scribes that like to go in long robes. He said, watch out for those guys. So you, you, you believe that he's false? Absolutely. You believe yes. that all of those that uh, wear the same kind of... Uh... Well, I think that some, some might just wear the long robes through ignorance because they have not read that verse in Mark chapter 12 where Jesus said, beware of the preachers who go in long robes. They might be ignorant. This guy to my left is for sure false because he thinks homosexuality is fine, you know, that is just so contrary to the Bible. Why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Because you, they were filthy are, homosexuals. Are you, the, are you the judge? Uh, leave God this, is the no, judge. No, no, no. Leave God this, is the judge. Okay. Leave this guy. This guy is a fake, and we cannot come and entertain our faith. We are not here to see who. We are not here for a debate. We are here for a. a for, for talking, for discussing, for dialoguing, to know what is where forward. What are we saying about, about the gays, uh, about the, the lesbians in the society? And if somebody, a, a fake person like this who claims to be a pastor, say, talks like this and accept, expect us, the listeners, to listen to this kind of rubbish, and we say this is a, is, is a good fearing person, mm-hmm. I doubt his Christianity. I right. doubt himself. I doubt his love because Christianity is all about love. And Christianity is all, is all, all, all about compassion. If you've got love for the, your neighbor, love for your God, love for your every person and this guy next to me claims to be a christian and he wants us to listen to this well it's a waste of our false. time that's what he's saying you're he's false a, he's a, himself is a false the way he uttered these speeches he's not even preaching he's not he's quoting he's quoting out of context the quote that he's doing is out of context but reverend, have you, according but to his wish. reverend have you ever I, I was asking him the same thing have you ever maybe at one point in your life said to yourself Maybe I'm doing things, things the wrong way. Maybe this is not what God is saying I should do. Maybe the, what I'm preaching is, is, is wrong. My brother, I went for theological studies, okay? Don't take me like any other person we see around. My lecturers in the university will tell you that I was one of the best students in my time. I did my, I did my diploma in pastoral theology. I've got my degree in theology. I've got master's in theology. I've studied theology, left, right, and center. That I doesn't make you right. Of, that doesn't and, make you and right. And listen here, Jeff. L- listen, Reg. Listen, Reg. I will stand and I will stay and go for counseling to know, to want to know my conscience and to feel what is my conscience saying to me. And I will ask people, elderly persons, elderly pastors, to preach for me. 
if at all I think I am out of the out of context, I always want people to come and correct me. Those who understand the scripture better than myself, I'll go to the bishop. I'll go to either each of the Catholic bishop, and we discuss things and to ask him if God is still in control. Am I am I still relevant for now? If I'm not relevant, I will leave the ministry. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, Pastor Anderson, what do you say to that? Well, I think that the listeners at home are smart enough to figure out who's fake and who's not. Yes. Let them decide. And this guy can brag about all his theological degrees and brag about all these accolades. You know what I got? I got the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And the Bible says in Leviticus 20.13 yeah, no, no, that think, if a man... Don't, no, listen. Don't think any spirit is the spirit from God. What makes you that the spirit that tells you that is the spirit of God? You because should know the which spirit that many that tells, spirits, Maybe I follow the spirit of... Well, Israel. because the spirit that tells me that agrees with the Bible in Leviticus 20.13 13, when it says that if a man lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. If the Bible agrees with my spirit, then I got the Holy Spirit. You have an unclean spirit. Right. That is spirit is yours, my brother. That's why you are saying you are against people. Well, you know what? If, God, I love people I'll... too. I love children, which is why I hate pedophiles. Mm -hmm. And you can't love the flowers without hating the weeds. Mm -hmm. You can't love the flowers without hating the weeds. Uh, 3956962, 3956962. That's the number that I'd like you to call me on right now. Um, 14960 is the SMS line. And um, Breakfast with Reg is our Facebook page. I'm so exhausted right now from hearing you guys. Not even me speaking, but hearing you guys. Reg, the Mozona pasta should cool down. Please advise him. Another one says, Pastor Anderson is absolutely right in everything. Please ask directions to the church. Uh, want to go visit. This is from BC. Another one says, Reverend Manpan Manpani, anger is a sin. Come down. Ra Kroha Holoa. Huh? Kroha Holoa Holofo. Bita Masturit. In actual fact, um, I'll tell you uh, just one thing that is that is actually happening as we speak. Uh, Pastor Anderson is arrogant. Wasn't he briefed about Setswana culture? Kante Ahakona, a reformed homosexual, Lumite, reuking both sides. And uh, another one says, another one says, um, I like Anderson being straight, but I disagree with death penalty for gays. We are under grace, so we preach to them to repent. But Mampani is such a. F um, I get a wrong or yarn ho ho. Pastor Anderson, before I take one or two calls before I go to the news, directions uh, to the church. No, 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 okay, directions to the church. Yeah, let me give, give the directions. Yes. No, we are okay, not here, we so are if they, hey, hey, be quiet, I'm giving the directions. Hey, we are not here to advise the church here. Hey, he said they want it, we're giving it to him. You go down the Tlok Wang Road, if Riverwalk is on your right, you're heading toward the Tlok Wang Road. And you get to a service station on the right mm. that is called One Filling Station. Mm. You turn right at the filling station, mm. and you curve around the filling station, second dirt road on the right. It is plot 5856. And so uh, that's how people get to the church. We have services Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m., right. Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. in Tlokwang. It's very close to the One Filling Station. Just right behind it's, it. You yeah, curve around, take the second dirt road on the right. Uh, uh, there's a lot happening in the studio this morning. I see immigration officials uh, just outside the studio. We are trying to find out what they are doing here because I know I don't have an interview with them. I don't know whether they are here for you, Pastor Anderson. <laughs> um, talking about immigration, they, they, um, we, we understand the way you had to, to get to Botswana is... Um, through Uganda, is that Ethiopia, it? Ethiopia. 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 Uh, you can't go through the UK... No, I cannot go through the UK, cannot go through Johannesburg or Cape Town. Because of your sentiments? Well, because I've been banned from South Africa and the United Kingdom. Because they're afraid of what I have to say. Yes. They're afraid of the truth. Yes. So they want to silence me because they know that the words that I'm preaching from the Bible have power and they're scared right. of the truth. All right. 3956962 Gibbs FM, you're live. Hey, good morning, sir. Yeah, we're here. Yes, sir. Uh, the Bible says uh, Satan uh, he must create like the angel of light. Right. I I, I hear the, I hear the most liberal work of uh, the, the the church should preach love, should preach love, should preach love. But remember that Satan went uh, uh, talked through Peter. Uh, seemingly like you, but I, 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 I we are love. Ara, Jesus Christ, I'm What's your point? Go. What's your point? Is it like 
they, 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 could, the Bible is straight and forward. There is no, there is no like a, all these things study gay. Okay, thank you so much. Gabs of Fabian Live. Hey, morning, Raj. Yeah, yeah, just a quick one. Um, you know what? What the pastor Anderson is preaching is definitely hate. Uh, not being a Christian, I'm against the homosexuality, not the homosexuals. Love the people, hate the sin. Yeah. We should differentiate the two. That's what I can say. Okay, thank you, Sam. Gives up from your live. Hello. G- yes, go on, please. How are you? You know what? I, 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 for me, I just want to to say I don't have to listen to any of the pastors there. Right. Mm-hmm. Talking. There are certain things that when you were created as human beings, mm. you are literally given brains to think. There are certain things that gives you the shrink or the that that feeling when something that you're doing is wrong, like a caution thing. Mm-hmm. So certain things like maybe homosexuals, it still gives you that feeling that is not right. But you still go back to your test your your Ten Commandments as a as a Christian to read the Bible says, Love thy neighbor. So, and for Pastor Anderson to say, kill homosexual, for me it's a bit, I don't know, who's supposed to do the killing? Okay. Like, is it him or whoever? Thank because the Bible says do not kill at the same time. Thank mm. you so much, man. Pastor Anderson, are you acting as the, as, as the judge? I, I'm sorry, what was that? Are you judging? Isn't that what the Bible yeah, says but we the, shouldn't? No, the Bible says yeah. that we should. Th- this is what Jesus said. Mm. Judge not after the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. The Bible says, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by us, he said, we're going to judge angels. Mm. How much more things that pertain to this life? Well, so see, they take that verse, judge not. That's not the whole verse. They need to read the whole passage, Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5, because he tells you just don't be a hypocrite when you judge. Right. Once you get the beam out of your own eye, then you can take the speck out of your brother's eye because you're not being a hypocrite. Okay. Have you taken the speck out of your eye? Well, absolutely, All because right. I am faithful to my wife. I don't just... You know, have sex with everything that moves. Okay, Pastor Stephen Anson, founder and pastor at Faithful World uh, Word Baptist Church in the United States. Uh, Reverend Tabo Mampani, second vice president of the Botswana Council of Churches and pastor at the Evangelical Lutheran Church in, in Botswana. Ken young man from Le Habibu, he's the advocacy officer there. I'm going to go to the news uh, bulletin. We are going to continue this discussion on the other side because I haven't been able to take your calls. I can see Lili Di Nunyana. But uh, like I was saying, immigration officials, for, for the first time ever, they are here and I believe that they want to have a word with uh, Pastor Anderson. We'll try to find out what the whole issue is about. Then. 12 is your time. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being with us on Breakfast with Reg. And uh, welcome. We are still continuing with this discussion that we are having with regards to um, the presence of Pastor Anderson in the country. The controversial anti-gay pastor arrived Thursday, had a service on Sunday. And uh, he's already identified what he sees as problematic in, in, in our society in Botswana. And he says, you know, alcoholism is a problem. And he's also attacked pastors for being... Um, for being toothless, saying that he says that they are sissies because they are not preaching against the huge immorality in the country. He says the government must kill homosexuals, pedophiles, and um, that if sla- slavery were allowed in the Bible, he would support it. And he doesn't think that women should uh, should be allowed to preach in churches. He's rubbish the New Good News Bible uh, version as a piece of junk, and that the King James Bible is the only Bible that should be read. Anderson uh, is here in the studio. By the way, he's the founder and pastor at the Faithful Word Baptist Church in the United States. Reverend Tabo Mambani is also here, second vice president of the Botswana Council of Churches and pastor at the Evangelical Lutheran Church in, in Botswana. Ken Youngman is an advocacy at Le Habibu. I'm going to go straight to the calls and then um, I'm going to ask you to make them very brief because obviously there are so many of you who still want to have a say and uh, have to read your SMS and your comments on our Facebook page, Gabs FM, you're live. Hello. Make it with a man. Yes, me. Hey, if, if, if you preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ as it is in the Bible, there's no way you cannot annoy people who are preaching the compromised gospel. Mm-hmm. Because Apostle Paul in the book of First in Galatians chapter one verse eight, Urule, whoever preaches the gospel that they do not preach is cursed. So whoever is compromising what the Bible says is cursed. 
So we are not going to compromise and brag about things that are social ills like Kore, cohabitation, mobile sauna, water. We should be praying that God should bless us with marriages, that God should heal our nation from uh, homosexuality so that our children can be freed from that evil spirit. Right. So basically, you are agreeing with what Pastor Anderson is uh, yes. position. Okay. Yes, I'm Thank agreeing. Thank you so much, Mike. Yabza Fem, you're live. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Pastor Anderson, yes. Pastor Anderson is mm. on the right track. Right. I agree. You know, you cannot amend the Bible. Mm-hmm. If God said uh, homosexuals should be stoned to death, uh, not a thing. I mean, you cannot say, no, because of the New Testament, God cannot change his mind. So what, why are you not doing it? No, I agree with your government. Amen. It should be the government. It, it, it should be the government. Yes, uh, amen. I agree with the caller. It should okay. be the government. Okay. So the pastor is on the right track. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. from your live. Reggie. I'm going to take a look at you. Please go ahead, sir. Yes. Reggie, Pastor Anderson is on point. Okay. The thing is, mm-hmm. we have people who are covering the truth with a lot of lies. Mm. God has never condoned the homosexuality from the onset. Mm-hmm. It is actually even repeatedly covered in most scriptures. this thing. But the problem is that we are trying to use our human feelings to at least cover and to cater for these people amongst us. You know, Having something that is sinful doesn't mean we are accepted. It's kind of like we are living with those people. Mm-hmm. We need to have somebody who comes and wakens us up. But this is not the right thing. Mm-hmm. We need to accept the truth. Mm-hmm. Homosexuality is not really what God is condoning. Mm-hmm. Thank you so I much. agree with Gibbs of your life. Hello. Make you a Emma. Yeah, I wanted to comment about one scripture here, like I thought there is not time. Yes. Uh, Pastor Anderson uh, mentioned the scripture Leviticus 20, verse 13, talking about the fact that if a man lies with mankind as, if a, uh, as, of, as, uh, as though it's a woman, then they must be put to death. In the same chapter, in Leviticus 20, verse right. number 10, it says, and the woman and the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, <laughs> even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. This is the same Leviticus, Eribu So I don't understand how Pastor uh, Anderson can choose. I agree with both scriptures. Oh, right. I believe that adultery should have, be put to you death. Have, okay. You have previously said that. That uh, adultery is not a sin. It I is did not a say that. Crime. No, so no, no. He, I'm saying it's you both. Did you say it's also a crime, or do you said you said it's I, a sin, I, I, not a crime? No, no, no. I said it is a sin and a crime, and I believe and, both verse ten and verse thirteen. And, they're and both therefore right. Therefore, you believe adulterers should also be put. Yes, yes, yes. I do. But previously, you didn't. Okay, no, that's you, it was a misunderstanding. I've always. Okay, so he says all of them should, both of them should be put to death. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, even if we were to say that, I was just pointing out that if, previously he, not, he did not say that. No, that, no, it was a I'm misunderstanding. It's okay. The, the, the Jesus that came to die for us came for the reason that we should be loving, not to condemn other people. I understand uh, another caller said that we should hate the sin and love people. I don't see why and where the Bible says we should hate people. It says that we should hate sin and love people. Okay. So there is nothing wrong with loving people and hating sin. Okay. This is what you should be preaching. Thank you so much, May. Gebza from your live. Gebza from your live. Um, hello, Ray. Who am I speaking to? Where are you calling us from? Uh, you are speaking to fraud um, in Kabarone. Right. Um, the, the issue that Anderson is actually presenting, yeah, part of it is quite true, mm-hmm. but the, the rest of the portion really is not. What are you not in agreement with? Yeah, because um, the issue of, of, of a man sleeping with another man, sleeps with a woman. Sorry? Hello? Scripture okay. in terms of the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was subject to the earthly sanctuary. But currently, we are dealing with a situation of the heavenly sanctuary where 
Yeah. And that way, I'm no. going to have to let you go. Your, your line is not clear. I'm sorry. Gabs FM, you're live. Hello, good morning. Mm, make it well, man. Okay. We are the Queen Mohamed. Please go ahead. Um, I'm so disappointed to see two ghost generals in the studio who are contradicting one another in the sense that they're supposed to be saying the same things because they're preaching from the same gospel. I, I agree with Pastor Anderson that God is against um, gays. Mm-hmm. But the words that come from his mouth, some of them, they're not fit because the Bible says that whatever comes from your mouth must be seasoned. So there's a way that he can portray this and tell the truth that is from the gospel. As for the other pastor, I don't know where he's getting this from. As a man of God, what a, you, you know, for you to have, you, you have to have the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to mm-hmm. preach the gospel, right? Mm-hmm. You can go, you can have as many masters as you want, but if God is not using you, forget it. <laughs> right? Thank you so much. So we, we are told about love. God is talking about love. And if you kill a person because they are gay, you have not solved the problem because you are killing the flesh. But that spirit that was at work with them, they'll go and abode elsewhere. So we need to pray for such people. And we don't need to judge them. But to preach the gospel and tell them from the scriptures that God does not like this. Right? Because we understand that gays, thieves, you know, people who fornicate, people who lie, it's not, they're not responsible for that. There's a spirit behind that. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Gives a family alive. My point... Um to Pastor Anderson, I agree with everything you say, ex- except the fact that you're saying people should be killed. You know, when we come to God as soon as He has given us another chance to repent, I believe that homosexuals, if they can come to their senses and begin to repent, God can hear them from heaven. Right. And can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? Uh, because we, we, have, we need to be very brief. Yes, um, yes, yes. If you are agreeing with everything that Pastor Anderson has said and you do not agree with what he's saying with regards to stoning of um, homosexuals, how then do you do you um, uh, um, justify that? Because he's saying that the reason why he's saying that about homosexuals is because the Bible says that. That is why I'm saying with what he is saying. I don't agree with the point that people should be killed because everyone but, goes. But wait, out wait, thinking. wait. If he says that's what the Bible says, how can you not agree with that? If you agree with everything else that he says. What, listen to what I'm saying. Right. In the old God, that was, he's quoting from the book of, the book of Leviticus. But we are coming to a, there's, there's, a, there's a room for repentance. Nobody is being killed. The, the only person who can kill somebody, nobody has been given the authority to, be, to kill. God came down because he, Jesus came down because everybody was a sinner. But my point is that. When we repent, God has given us a second chance to repent from every, whether fornicators, whether adulterers, or homosexuals. That is why he's saying whoever is doing this thing, this thing, homosexuals, fornicators, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But he is giving us another chance to repent. And when we repent and live according to his word, which says we should do this and that, we then can inherit the kingdom of God. Thank you so but much, man. No one is, uh, is allowed to kill anyone. Thank you, Gabs FM. You're live. Hello. Mm. Yes, I wanted to just uh, ask uh, Pastor Anderson one question. Um, do you believe that uh, everybody has the right uh, to, to, to uh, I mean, do you, do, does he believe that he was given the right to be a child of God? Or does he believe, does he believe that everybody has the right to be a child of God? Okay. Gibbs FM, you're live. Morning, Reggie. Andrew, how are you? Um, I'd like to address uh, that guy. Please go ahead. We don't have time okay. for that. Uh, morning, uh, Pastor Anderson. Just say what you want to say, sir. Okay, I'd like, to, I'd like to find out from him what he thinks should happen to people with AIDS. What should happen to, to children born out of wedlock. That is not Wh- their fault. Wh- why, why AIDS in particular? Because he has, he has uttered about what should happen to people with AIDS. I'd like to know his stance on what should happen with people with AIDS. And if he's saying, he's saying that he's not violent, what did he do to an old man at his church on Sunday? What, what did him and his people do to an old man at his church on Sunday? No, you tell us. We don't know. What, what they, happened? Manhandled, they manhandled an old, an old man, pushed him out of the church, and physically handled him. Why? What happened? 
he he he's saying he's, he doesn't believe. No, no, no. Biden. What had happened? You are giving us parts of his uh, of a story. story. What happened? Okay, d- did he handle the man the man or not? What happened? I don't. Uh, what what co- what led to that happening? He thought that the the old man was a homosexual, so they started pushing him and handling him and, and pushing him out of the church. Oh, okay. the man was not a homosexual. Okay, and they thought he was, and they started manhandling and pushing him out of. The they church. just looked at him and they 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 they, they vetted him as homosexual. No, okay. I think it was no, because of the utterances of what he was trying to say. Thank you so much, Sir Gabs. I you're the last caller. Hello. You're the last caller. Be, be, be brief, oh. please. Thank you. Hello. Okay, Gabs, I you're the last caller. Right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You want to respond to the church incident? Uh, yeah, ab- absolutely. Uh, when we had the church service on Sunday morning, there were fo- foreigners who came to the church. None of them were M- M- Botswana. They were all foreigners who came to the church. There were about six of them holding up signs protesting us. And there was an old man who told me that he was a homosexual. Right. And I told him that he must leave. And after asking him to leave two times, politely... I took him and I dragged him out. And bouncers do it in bars every day because it's you're, our private you're property. Bar. You're not a bar? Yes, but, but we why? have the right to not allow homosexuals into the church. The but Bible aren't you, says... Aren't you there to, to help them? You cannot help the homosexual. In Romans chapter 1... How can you not help them? Because in Romans chapter 1, it says God gave them up. God gave them over. God gave them up. It's too late for them. Okay, so the, all the homosexuals... There's nothing, nothing. There's nothing we could do for them. Okay. It's too late for them. We have to re-educate ourselves here. We have to re-educate. The reason that Jesus Christ died for us is for us to repent and to have eternal life. So whoever is a sinner, is a sinner, is purified by Jesus Christ. Either a gay, either a, les- a lesbian, whatever sinner that he- he's doing, God is purifying us through Jesus Christ and through the blood of Jesus Christ. What do you say to that, Pastor Anderson? I say that in the New Testament of the Bible, Romans chapter 1 It says that these people have been given up by God, given over by God. And in verse 32, it says that homosexuals are worthy of death. Romans 1, 32, New Testament. So who else has been given up by God? The Bible teaches, it only mentions the fact that people who have rejected the Lord over and over again have been given over by God. And that because of that... Cain, have you rejected the the Lord? Have you rejected the Lord? No. No. He's a liar. Okay, why? What because the Bible says that the that the reason why a man would lust with a man, burn in lust toward a man, is because he's been rejected by God. You, no you, normal man lusts after another you man. You haven't rejected God because these, that's who you are. That's what you know. You know. You don't know anything else. Yep. That's how I was born. That's how I've always felt as a kid growing up and everything. And like him, we're also raised in a Christian family. I went to a Catholic kindergarten, Catholic junior school, Catholic high school. So, I honestly don't understand who appointed Pastor Anderson, the Messiah, to judge, to point out who is right and who is wrong. And I thought for me, I thought church was a place of God. Mm. Church was a haven where people can come and yeah. ask for do shelter from God. you save souls, Pastor? Yes. How do you then um, get rid of somebody who maybe may be there to to say to you, please save me? He's not there for that. He was there to no, start no, no, I'm trouble. Asking, I'm asking, yeah. what if he's there and he needs to be saved? He may be there to start trouble, but he may be needing uh, of save. Yeah, if anybody needs to be saved, I would love to get them saved. But the Bible says that if they're a homosexual, they've already been given up. They've already been given over. Um, it's too late. Uh, <laughs> Reverend, uh, but we, we have to wrap this up. With with the position that Pastor Anderson is taking, and I'm, I must apologize because I haven't read a lot of the SMS that have come through. With the position that Pastor Anderson is is taking, you still believe that he is lost. Very lost, very lost. He's, but there are some people who are saying, not, and and I think this 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 issue of homosexuality is the one that uh, everybody is centering on, and they are saying, which Bible are you reading? 
The only thing is that people, they, read the, they quote the Bible out of context. Mm. They just take one, cha- one verse and they quote it. And they don't even know the origin of the text or the origin of the Bible. Why was that happening to the, to the people? Mm-hmm. people? We have to re-educate this nation. And I always tell the pastors that it is our task as the ministers of word and sacrament that we have to re-educate our own people so that not every, every Jack and Jill comes like this. This gentleman next to me here comes. They follow him because he can quote and he can say whatever he wants to say. And he think, they think he's right. Uh-huh. We have to know the Bible and understand why was it? To whom was he addressing? What what was he addressing? What situation was he facing? What Paul wrote this to the to the to the Romans? Right. Yeah. Um, um, Cain, would you, what would you say to Pastor Anderson? In conclusion, for me, Tata, I'm out of words, Reggie. Because I I can't hold you my ring, ubuelela morena Jesus, ukana. Le mahuk a bo khwakha jana mahuk a sa thapanya ka murutiana ka my brother this guy is not a pastor don't misuse the word pastor pastor is ourselves okay, okay. Yeah. I have to give him respect because he identifies himself as a pastor. He might not Despite be the fact that he doesn't dis- he give da- you respect. He doesn't respect me. That's fine. Okay. But ke khuri tshe ke dala maitse o shantse go respect mo tha a bona. Right. Yes. But go re hala I'm out of words rich go mo thoka re ke muruti a ba ana le le thole le kana kana and ha le gore o muruti wa kereke e be le gore wena wa re batho bana le le boleo batho bana le matimoni o bo sa ba le tele le gore ba tekerekeng then there's a problem you spew so much hate you spew so much hate and you're saying that people cannot come to church even though they need to be safe basically like i was saying then there's a there's a problem here's the problem okay i have nine children at my church how can i let homosexuals into my church when i know that they're child molesters right it's too dangerous. Why do, you say that child, safe. why do you say that child molesters? Because oh, if you study the history of homosexuality, even back to ancient Greece... No, we are not Greece, talking about history. Okay, why well, would then you if say, you study why would the you Bible... Say, why would you say Cain, for instance, is a uh, child molester? Because yeah. every single story in the Bible that involves homosexuals, they are raping someone. You, you, they are violating right. someone. Oh, okay. They but are not abusing. children. Oh, yes, children. Absolutely. And look at the statistics of how many little boys are molested by grown no, we are men. Not talking, oh, let's talk about Kate, for instance. Kate, have you molested a, a little boy? No. Nope. He's no. a liar. Okay, he's a liar. You, you yeah. know that? He has uh, sex with strangers. A, no, but he, that's, he all, that's what homosexuals but, do. But that's not the point. You, I think you're skirting the issue. I'm asking, have you had sex with children? He says no, and you're saying he's lying. There's, there's no skirting the issue. He's lying. Yeah. If I have to choose between believing what the Bible says about homosexuals... We are not talking about the Bible. We are talking about you accusing... I'm talking about well, the Bible. You may be, but <laughs> at this point in time, we are talking about you accusing him mm-hmm. of having slept with small boys. I am accusing him of being a pedophile. If he's not done it yet, he will do it later. Is because it? the history That's shows us it. that. The news reports tell us that. The Bible demonstrates homosexuals not to be reproducers, Would you hug him? but recruiters. Would you hug him? No, I don't want to touch him. He's, you he's you dirty. Don't, you don't want to touch him? I know, where he's, I know where, he's been, right. where he's been digging around, and right. it's disgusting. Okay. It's We're unsanitary. To, this is so much for a pastor. It's <laughs> unsanitary. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, guys, for coming through. Pastor Anderson is uh, founder and pastor at the Faithful Word Baptist Church in the United States, Reverend mm-hmm. Tabo Mampadi, second vice president of the Botswana Council of Churches and pastor at the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Botswana. Ken Youngman is from uh, Le Habibo, and he's the advocacy officer there. Pastor Anderson, I, 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 I pray to the Almighty that before you go, if uh, immigration officials are not going to be whisking you out of the country anytime soon, or we are understanding that even intelligence of, of officials now, a, intelligence agents may be around, if you are not being whisked out of the country anytime soon, I hope you, before you leave, you'll come and speak to us again. Thank you. I'd be glad to. Thank you so much, gentlemen.